Good evening and welcome to this special program focused on the appointments process for California state boards and commissions. I'm Eric Stern, the Deputy Director of Career Development here at Berkeley Law, and I'm thrilled to welcome more than 280 students and alums to this evening's program. This event is particularly well-timed given the excitement of this week's inauguration and the call to service that so many feel in this moment. It's now my honor to introduce tonight's speaker. Catherine Rivera Hernandez was appointed by Governor Newsom in June 2019 to serve as appointment secretary. Prior to her appointment, Ms. Rivera Hernandez served three administrations as a board member on the Agricultural Labor Relations Board, beginning with her appointment from Governor Davis in November 2002. Prior to joining the board, Ms. Rivera Hernandez served as the Chief Deputy Cabinet Secretary for Governor Gray Davis. Ms. Rivera Hernandez received a BS in Business Management from Arizona State University, and she obtained her law degree from Berkeley Law, where she served as co-editor-in-chief of the La Raza Law Journal. Before I turn it over to Secretary Rivera Hernandez, I'd like to invite you to put your questions in the Q&A box during tonight's webinar, and the Secretary will try to answer as many of those questions as possible after she's finished her presentation. You'll be allowed to see the questions being asked and can upvote a question by clicking the thumbs up icon. And now it's my honor to turn the webinar over to Secretary Rivera Hernandez. Well, thank you so much, Eric. And um, I explained earlier, I was scheduled to be in the office to give this speech, but um, due to the inauguration and other preparations, um, my office was, the office was closed. Um, so um, uh, again, I'm home Zooming like everybody else. Um, I really do appreciate this um, opportunity. I give a lot of speeches, probably even more now um, using Zoom. Um, and you know they're all important, they're all great, but there is something to be said for um, speaking to a group with whom I have a shared experience. Um, some of you literally um, were there during the years that I was there. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed my law school experience. Sorry. Um, not only, you know, just the fun traditions that we had, the friendships, and then of course the education. Um, I've had the pleasure of recommending over 30 Bolt grads to the governor for appointment. I have several colleagues within the governor's office that went to Cal. Um, others are serving as secretaries, as directors, as deputies, as general counsels within the administration. And then of course, um, several are serving on um, boards and commissions. I am gonna share my big game story because I am a football fan. Um, there's about a handful of us that are colleagues there. And for before the big game on a Friday, um, our director of operations said that she heard there might be some shenanigans going on between the Cal grads um, and the other uh, school. And she was correct. And we ended up dressing up the Cal bear um, in Cal garb. So, um, that was fun. Um, we didn't get in trouble, so that was good as well. Now, no one goes, no one goes to law school um, thinking, you know, I want to be the appointment secretary someday. Um, there are definitely cheaper ways to do that. But without a doubt, my legal education has played a pivotal role in my career path. Um, for my first stint with the Davis administration, where I worked on policy and legal issues that would ultimately be critical to my move to appointments. Like all of you, I could never have predicted a year and a half ago, what this job would look like. But this time of COVID has really highlighted the importance of having the right people in critical positions across the administration. The other reality of COVID is that it also has led appointees to make understandable life choices, whether retirement or different career opportunities, which is job security for me, but is a continuing challenge. And the reason discussions like tonight are critical to the administration. So. I not only appreciate your patience with me tonight, but um, I appreciate you taking time out of your evening. Generically, when I am asked about what the governor is looking for in appointees, I repeat what he has said many times. He wants his administration to look like the population it serves. And of course, we talk about diversity, but that does not encompass only gender or ethnicity in the traditional sense. It really is about a diversity of experiences, geography, upbringing the highs and lows of both personal and professional life. It is in fact, um, I think the type of experiences that lead 
to a demonstrated commitment to addressing disparities and helping all communities thrive, which is a goal of this administration. I often share my own story of my parents who grew up in the field. They had me at 20 and going to school and clothes my mother made. I stayed with sitters while they went to night school um, and watched them both um, spend their careers helping others in both the public and private sector. It really does serve as a vivid and daily reminder of the struggles of California families and businesses. And I share this because when I meet with the governor to discuss candidate, candidates, he knows I've already checked the boxes around qualifications. He wants to know what are the experiences that drew them to serve. And with 3,000 appointed positions, this is often the only chance that he gets to really know his administration. Among these 3,000 appointments, there are hundreds of board and commissions that are constantly turning. So really my goal here is that I would like to demystify the process so that more of you will consider um, service in the administration. With the number of appointments we have at any given time, the idea of having to know someone um, goes out the window. Uh, I often tell the story of Steve Gordon, um, who was sitting at his Bay Area job, reading day after day of the troubles of the Department of Motor Vehicles and thought that he would submit his application to serve. His application was in fact pulled. He was um, interviewed and um, thank goodness that we had him as the director of DMV um, when COVID hit. His innovation, his talents, his background were all critical um, to what they are, have and are currently having to go through. But that being said, we do have to use our online application process with those types of numbers, um, which is at the gov.ca.gov appointments tab. It is, in fact, the first step for all um, appointments. And it's also a tremendous resource. There is a link on there that is updated monthly of vacancies on boards and commissions, geology, boating, parks. If you have an interest, we likely have a board. In addition, there's a shorter list of current opportunities. They are the priority or hard to find administration positions um, for which we are recruiting. Lastly, uh, there is a list of deputies that you can email directly and it has their portfolios. So if there is a certain area that you're interested, you'll be able to identify the deputy responsible for that to discuss any potential opportunities. Now, I know I said that you didn't need to know someone, but of course, if you do know someone, use them. Um, letters of support can be submitted. I always tell people it's definitely quality over quantity. Um, it usually needs to be value added. Somebody who can really not just say, yes, appoint this person, but why? Attest to your experience, your interest, your commitment, whatever their experience with you might be, um, it really, we really look to make sure that it's value added. In regards to the application itself, there are people on um, <laughs> this Zoom that could tell you it is fairly detailed and ask some really sensitive questions. They are, of course, confidential. They are not subject to any disclosure, and they are only reviewed by my staff. They are not even reviewed outside of the um, appointments unit. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we are looking for people who have had many varied experiences. So I always tell people, if you have a comeback story, um, this governor is the type of governor that, that's here to, you know, to listen to that. And we have appointed people who have made poor choices as young people. We have had people who have tried businesses that have failed. Uh, you know, we're really here for what did you do after that? And, you know, what have you learned from that experience? So I just always tell people, sometimes they look at the application and think, I don't know if I want to fill that out. And if I do, I don't think I'm going to be appointed. And I just always tell people to don't take yourself out of the game. The other um, recommendation that I made is that um, if you know that there is a specific position that you are interested in, um, I recommend Googling it. It really is going to be the best way to determine time commitment, subject matter. It will tell you the specifics of, you'll be able to see the agendas. How often does that board meet? How long are their meetings? How complex are the issues? Does this interest me? Um, because every board and commission in every position is different, um, it's really hard to tell people how much a certain board or a certain position, um, how much time that might take or um, of their time. And, and some of these are very, um, uh, do, do take quite amount uh, of time outside of work. So um, I think often the best way to kind of figure out if you're a good match is to, in fact, um, take a look at the agendas themselves. The other thing that you can learn um, from Googling is the level of controversy um, that there might be surrounding a board, which of course can change. 
Um, um, during my Davis during the Davis administration, I did not hear about the horse racing board very often. When I started with the Newsom administration, it was all I heard um, about. And um, so that often can change as well. But if you don't want your name in the paper, it's usually a pretty good indicator to see um, if that's a chance. Um, once we pull applications for a specific um, board or for a specific slot, we do not pull them all. So people will often ask, well, I submitted an application that I never heard, heard back. Um, one is I always recommend people, the reason I put all of our emails on there um, is so that you can check in. And I, I tell my deputies, we should welcome that. We need that. We have way too many positions. We need people to, to, to check in. Um, and so you can often do that. And at, usually what all that will also tell you is they'll tell you exactly what we might be looking for. When we're looking at boards and commissions, we're filling out a puzzle. Um, it's, we're looking at what expertise is needed on that board, what expertise came off of the board, you know, whether it's a certain profession, um, a certain geographical makeup, um, and what voice might be lacking. So we often call them the, you know, the unicorns. They may be looking for a lawyer from the Inland Empire um, with a certain expertise. And um, so that in itself uh, narrows the pool down quite a bit. But once we do pull um, the candidates that we think match the criteria that we are, are looking for, we then start the interview process. And it is fairly extensive for those that have been through it before. Um, it usually starts at a department level. It then will go to the agency level. And then it moves to the governor's office. Every single appointment um, comes through the governor's office and includes either myself, one of my deputies, and then a deputy from one of the other units, depending on what the appointment is, whether it's a policy, um, might be a cabinet deputy, a legislative deputy, um, but every single appointment comes through. And although every appointment is, is different, it really is that is our chance to get to know the, the individual, because as I mentioned, we have the qualifications, we have the resumes. Um, it's really our chance to get to know who you are, why you want to do this, what is your interest in the administration, because as I said, that is ultimately what I end up sharing with um, the governor. Once we have a final recommendation, um, it, depending on the board or commission, either I will take in um, more than one candidate um, and show the governor a chart, and he will take a look and, and we'll have that discussion. Um, more often than not, it's a single candidate. Um, and once he signs off on that, the next step is uh, to be pressed. Um, and then that's when the real work begins. Um, with that, I think I will stop since I know there will probably be several questions. I'm also, my daughter is indicating I might be able to um, zoom back in. So um, I'll stop there. Well, there's a couple of good questions in the, in, the, in the chat that I wanted to um, pose to, um, to Secretary Rivera. So um, as some of you might know, there's a question from, um, from John Quo um, about, uh, some of you might know, um, there is a plum book um, that lists uh, positions uh, that uh, presidents can appoint individuals to um, in the White House, in federal offices, that's kind of happening right now with President Biden. Um, and the question from John is whether or not there is an equivalent to the plum book in the state, in California state government. Oh, I'm trying to join. Um, so I, the, the closest thing that we have would be on the website, and that would be the list that we have of um, vacant uh, positions on boards and commissions, that, and that is updated monthly. So we, it will definitely tell you, for example, if we're looking for an accountant on a certain board. My, oh, I think I'm back. Um, if we're looking for an accountant, if we are looking for... Um, a certain licensee. So it gets pretty specific um, in the list and you will be able to sort of see what we're looking for. But the other thing I encourage people is because we do have a constant churn, if there's something you really think that you're well suited for and you don't see a vacancy, there will be a vacancy because there are constant terms. I would recommend reaching out to the deputy assigned to that. If it's a licensing board, something like that, it's gonna be Diana Essex. She does a lot of our boards. Um, and then of course we have education and other boards, but you can talk to that 
deputy and you can ask them, I'd like to put in an app, I'd like to at some point serve on this board, when is the next opening, when we start the process of trying to fill that position. So I do encourage people to take a look at the vacancies, but also reach out if it's something you really think that you would be suited for and they can tell you when would be the best time um, to sort of engage in that process. Oh, I can't hear you, sorry. So we've got uh, two questions which are sort of related um, and they are about conflicts. And the question is, you know, if you are a current federal government employee, can you, um, can you sit on a board? And then if you are a former federal government employee, can you, um, can you still be appointed to a board or a commission? The answer is yes. <laughs> just, like they're, just like they're mining and siphoning off um, our talent right now, um, we absolutely will take, take them back. Yes, absolutely. And that's true also for anything at the local level. Um, many county, um, there, there are not um, many restrictions in, in that respect. There's a question that just came in um, from someone who served on a county commission and filed a form 700 for financial disclosure and was wondering if this is standard across all boards and commissions. It is, there are very few exceptions um, to the form 700 filing, very few. It does put quite a, uh, we do lose some people for that, uh, you know, as, as I can imagine it, again, it's very detailed as far as what it discloses. So, but there, there are very few exceptions. I would say probably maybe a hand, only a handful. So it is standard. These are all really good questions. Keep them coming. Well, while we have a pause in the questions, um, Secretary, do you want to continue with um, uh, the, some of your presentation? Um, yeah, well, I mean, the one thing um, that, that I want to note is also that just because it has been a, a change, and, and this is just general knowledge because we're trying to get it out, and that is that um, we have, the governor also signed a bill last year regarding um, undocumented um, individuals where before they were prevented from serving and now, that, now they are, um, and so that was a recent change last year. Um, in addition, when you look on the um, on the list, there are also, you also see the word public slots. Um, and essentially those are slots of individuals that have no vested interest in that board or commission. Unlike some that might, you might have to be a licensee, for example, to be on a medical board or engineering. Um, with public slots, it has to be something that, somebody that has no investment. And they are actually the hardest ones, as you can imagine, um, to um, fill because they are people who don't have a vested interest. But for us, they're the critical ones because they're the accountability slots. They are the people of California, essentially watching what the board is doing. And they're also our eyes and ears um, on the board. So they are really critical. Um, so if you see, I mean, you can imagine, you know, again, you know, trying to um, recruit for, uh, you know, the podiatry board or the structural pest control board um, into a public slot. But I also encourage um, for those on here that might just be starting out and wanting to see what it's like to serve on a board, um, those are a great way to do that. We often, people who are very successful in one of our other boards, will tap them to go and work um, in another capacity after the fact when they are termed out, um, once they have kind of proven themselves to be, uh, you know, a really good board member. So I do encourage people to take a look at the public slots. Of course, if you want to be on the film commission, um, you can, as you can imagine, uh, you know, people when they, when you initially ask, well, what are you interested? In? You get film commission, everyone wants to be a UC regent. And as you can imagine, those are very competitive and very difficult, but we do have tons of other opportunities for folks. Um, so um, secretary, can you say a little bit more about some of the responsibilities and duties of members of boards and commissions, including um, what the time commitment might look like for different positions? Yeah, I mean, um, one is that every board and commission has a staff. So I do try to let people know that you are supported. Um, there are people there, usually an executive director and other staff that do onboarding and help to um, transition um, people who, who come on. But you can have a board or commission that maybe meets um, 
quarterly, um, but you could also have one that maybe meets for two days um, every month um, or, you know, one day every other month. It's really, it really does depend, which is why I tell people to do their homework and um, take a look at the website because that will really show you how long the meetings are and how often they're meeting, um, where they meet, although we're, we all know where we're meeting now, but, um, you know, ultimately um, where they, you know, usually meet. Um, and it can really just give you a great amount of information and detail. Um, I, you know, I have been told anything in the education world I have been told is it's like having a part-time job. Um, so there are some that are very heavy um, in that respect. Um, and then the other, sometimes what we do, which we think might be helpful for folks is, is have them actually talk to somebody who's already serving um, so that they can get a real um, insider um, view of what the work might look like as well. Terrific. And can individuals apply for several different positions at the same time? Yeah, um, absolutely. And, and I encourage that. I think it's a it's kind of like a, a, a balance, right? Um, it's enough because we know people have varied interests. You could be in, enjoy labor and enjoy parks and enjoy housing or whatever it might be. Um, so I think if you have an interest and you think you might want to serve, I, I would list it. Um, I think where um, it is unhelpful is if we get to the point where we can't tell um, what that what, what those interests are um, if every if everyone is listed. Um, oh, the other thing I will say is that you're not limited by the ones you list. Um, so for as I mentioned, if we're looking for um, a certain individual with a certain background from a certain area, um, it may also be you know certain we need a certain gender makeup of the board. Um, we will pull um, and search for those people. And if, even if they have not applied for that board, we will call them up and ask them if they are interested. And it's okay, I tell you, it's okay to say no. Um, if you say no, that's fine. We'd rather have you tell us that. Um, and it doesn't mean we won't come back to you because you know you said no. Um, I told to tell the governor, I, people tell me no every single day. So it's okay. <laughs> And um, uh, Secretary, for current Berkeley Law students and then very recent grads, um, any advice for how to um, position themselves, make themselves more competitive for these positions sort of, um, you know, down the line? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's interesting because as I mentioned, I don't know how I got here. When you look back, there was nothing about my path from, <laughs> from undergrad on that would have, um, or I would have thought that this was something that I would be, we'd be doing. So. Um, the one thing I try to tell people, because I think it's been in everybody's experience different, but I think the reason I, I have had the career path that I have had is because I've been enjoying what I've been doing. And, um, you know, I will just tell the story. The reason I ended up in the governor's office was because I, um, the nonprofit I worked for went under and I was offered a campaign job for some income, which was better than no income. Gray Davis, I was like, okay, I'll go work on a campaign. Um, anyone who's worked done campaign work knows that it is no joke. Um, and I just worked as hard as I could. I enjoyed the work very much. I was who I was. Um, and it turned out, of course, um, he won, um, which was not totally expected. And that the um, person who was in charge of the campaign, her name was Susan Kennedy, um, ended up becoming the cabinet secretary. So you can't predict those things. Um, and then, of course, offered me a job. <laughs> Um, and I, I have spoken to her twice. And when I asked her why she offered me the job, she said, because when I left at night, you were the only one still there in the office. And that's why. And so when I tell people, enjoy what, enjoy what you're doing. Um, these are really, it's really hard to predict. I'm not gonna lie, networking, um, people either love it or they hate it, but it also is important um, thing to do. Keeping in touch, because you don't know where people are, are going to end up. Um, you know, all of these, I mean, having this opportunity for me is, you know, is tremendous to have, you know, to talk to this, to this group as well. And, you know, it's group, I obviously have an affinity for it, you know. Um, so, you know, I think all of these, taking advantage of these types of opportunities um, are really crucial. And uh, it probably varies um, across the board, but um, what's sort of the typical timeline between the application getting in and then, um, uh, people being notified about, you know, potentially moving forward in the process. So I'm glad the people that have been appointed can't talk. Um, 
I will say I have been on the other side of the process five times. So I have brought a very different perspective to this job, I think, than, than others that might have who have not had to go through this. Every single time was different. So there is no standard is what I would have to say, which is not a great answer. If, um, and that is for many reasons. One is, if, especially if it's a board, um, as I was putting together the Agricultural Labor Relations Board, which is of course where I served and um, handled myself, I found the first person that I wanted to put on there, um, you know, let's say day one. Um, and it took me four more months um, to find the last person I wanted to put on there. So for the first person, it seemed like forever. And for the last person, it was rather quick. Um, so it really just does depend. The other thing I will say is with my deputies is that at any given time, they're working on um, probably a hundred positions at, at any given time. So we may be, get this done, get this done, get this done. And then something explodes over here and it's okay, I gotta go get, now I have to go do this. Um, and that's just the reality. I never, I, and I've said this, the governor knows I've said this, I've never per portray us as this well-oiled machine that is like step, step, step. The craziness of the positions, you know, the policy, the politics, everything that we have to do, um, you know, it really does kind of intersect um, and in sometimes it can lead to a very long um, process and other times it can be a matter of, of weeks. Um, but what I will say is this, um, and this is, I think, a, a big difference, and that is that the reason I put my deputies um, on the website is that if somebody calls and asks them what they're, where they are right now, they will tell you. They will tell you. I said, you know, we are transparent. Um, I always felt like I would rather know, you know, somebody said it's going to be six months or we're not looking for that position for um, probably another year. I mean, they will let you know um, and they will tell you, you know, where if you are in the process, where you where you stand. So I hope at least for those people that have gone through the process that are on this, that at least they were able to get that much um, out of us at, at any given at any given time. But, you know, it really does vary. I would say at least a few months for the most part. And then um, what's a typical term, you know, in, uh, in number of years? And then are there are a couple of questions about whether there are stipends available for travel or, or other expenses incurred as a result of service? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, so the terms do vary, but um, for example, on our licensing boards, they're two to three years. And then you, um, assuming that somebody is doing a good job, we always we usually look to reappoint them. And so you can be there for two terms. Um, of either whether it's two or three years. Um, the board I served on was five or five year terms. Um, and of course there are ones that are even longer than that. So it, that also does vary, but I wanna say it's probably somewhere in the, the more commonly in the two to, two to three year um, time frame for a term. And then, um, yeah, so we, there are two ways that we um, try to sort of account for the time that the service takes. One is we do uh, provide per diem, which also varies, and it is usually tied to the type of work, how much work has to be done. It can be anywhere from $100 to $400, um, because we do realize that for some people, they might have to take a day off of work to participate. Um, and then in addition, um, and that is being paid now. I mean, even though we're all on Zoom, I mean, it's still all the work has to get done. So that's that gets paid regardless. But if we... Um, we turn back to the traveling days, um, then of course travel is also um, reimbursed as well. And how, I mean, how has the pandemic kind of affected, you know, broadly the, the work of the commissions and the boards? Um, depending, you know, some were probably better prepared than others. I think in the beginning, um, everybody was just trying to get to figure out what their lives were gonna look like, obviously, and then with kids at school um, and or at home. Um, and so, but but very quickly people adjusted um, to, you know, this Zoom um, sort of situation. So it will be interesting to see how much of that um, carries on after, um, after COVID, because I think we have all realized, I mean, even those of us, you know, in, Within, within the governor's office. I mean, we all thought we could, you know, we couldn't do these jobs if you're not in the horseshoe. Um, and we have found that not only can we, you have to. <laughs> so um, yeah, it will be interesting. It will be interesting to see if people feel the need that to, you know, to still have to travel because most are recorded and the public is able to participate 
So, um, you know, all of the sort of normal qualifications of a board meeting are, are still taken care of. For students and um, and alums who might be, you know, considering a career in public service, um, Secretary, I was wondering if you could speak to what have been some of the most enjoyable experiences that you've had in public service over the course of your career. Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, my mother spent her entire career, I would say, um, in, in state government service. Um, I did not think, I mean, obviously I went to law school, I thought I was going to be, it's kind of funny now when I think about it, I thought I was going to be a corporate lawyer. Um, and so uh, really life took over. Um, you know, the campaign was unexpected. The um, going into the governor's office, um, very green um, at a young age was, was unexpected. Um, but once I was there and being able to accomplish, you know, when you talk about healthcare, the expansion of healthcare, where we were then versus where we are now, um, nothing has compared to my government service. Um, it was obviously an honor to be appointed to the Agricultural um, Labor Relations Board. As I shared, my parents were farm workers, all of their siblings, they all grew up in the fields, so did my grandparents. To be able to take on a, an opportunity like that with a, and to um, administer an act um, that is committed to um, protecting farm workers' rights was really, especially after the governor's office, which was like dog years, if I'm being honest, um, really was, was I thought the pinnacle. I thought that was like, this is fantastic. I loved the work. I loved the law. Um, we operated as an appellate court. Um, those cases were all important because they all affected um, those those workers. Um, so for me, I would say, you know, and again, no offense to the governor. I've only been here for a year and a half. Um, so I didn't think I would, you know, ever be doing um, anything in the political realm again. But, and I did not just, I, I did not know the governor, I will say. Um, I knew the people who were working for him, which is how I ended up being recruited, but I did not know him as an individual. So, um, you know, I wasn't sure what to what to expect. The commitment that he has and who you see on, on screen um, is who he is. And I couldn't have been happier about that. His commitment to diversity um, is so real and it's so genuine and it's made my job just so enjoyable um, because you know what I would want to do um, if I was governor is what he allows me to do um, at, you know for him. So I just you know as I mentioned earlier, um, you know putting undocumented immigrant students on school boards, um, you know just everything we've been able to do at the at for COVID. When you look at Dr. Galley over at Health and Human Services, I mean he has really set the bar for anybody that comes um, behind this, this administration. And it has really been really the most enjoyable thing I've, I've ever done has been this job for sure. That's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, a question came in that I wanted to pose to you, um, which is uh, regarding uh, how, how well represented attorneys are on um, uh, the different boards and commissions as a, as a profession as compared to other professions? So I know I'm a little partial, um, so I don't know how much of that affects it. But what I will say is I think when we talk about the puzzle, part of the puzzles usually are finding attorneys. Um, you know, we, depending on the board or commission, we're often, you know, we might be looking for a person who is, runs an organization, whether it's a nonprofit organization or whether it's a, a you know, private sector. Um, we may look for somebody who is um, in communications who can help with messaging or how the board's conveying um, their accomplishments. Lawyers just naturally fit um, in coming in there because there's very often questions just among the board that they can bring their background to or their own leanings and those especially who are practicing um, as well and um, you know kind of bring that Again, I'm going to sound like I'm tooting our, all of our horns, but you know, it's a, the analytical part of things, um, any background they might have on the legal side of things. Um, I know I use my legal education every day, despite being an appointments um, secretary. Um, there is something to be said for that education and, and having worked in those arenas and having those voices on the board. So they are actually pretty well represented because they're considered part of the, the puzzle. 
I was very proud to put um, at the horse racing board, which we kind of reorganized, um, to put the first African American woman who um, was the attorney that we wanted to put um, over there at the at the horse racing board. So I think they're a needed. I think they're a needed voice. And I guess our our last question, Secretary, is um, what kind of advice you might have just generally for, um, for law students and attorneys who, who aspire to, to, serve, um, to serve California, um, uh, the types of opportunities that they might um, sort of pursue uh, and uh, just general advice that you have for them based on um, the number of different capacities in which you've served the state. Yeah, um, I think the first thing is engage you know, I always, that's my, my job is my number one piece, what I, it's, and this is true, for the most part, I tell the governor that, um, you know, a lot of times the talent we're looking for, they're not necessarily looking for us. Um, very often people are very happy doing what they're doing, where they're doing it, um, aren't really looking for take on another, another commitment. And so I just always tell people to, to just please engage, give it a, give it a chance, um, because it really is, I think meaningful um, work, um, and it does depend on the board of commission. But they are all meaningful work to the people who are working in the industries, especially in the licensing. You know, you're impacting people's businesses, you're impacting their livelihoods, and you're also protecting the public. Um, it is meaningful work, and it matters to the people who are going through those boards and commissions. Um, it's also very fruitful as far as you know the, the administration again needs voices and this administration, especially when we talk, I often get asked, are there boards or commissions that deal with racial injustice or, you know, certain sort of issues. Um, and, you know, even most, you know, most recently with the, um, with everything that has been occurring, I tell them every board and commission needs a racial lens. Um, I think that's been part of the problem is we sort of pigeonhole ourselves into like, well, this is the only board, water, housing, air, it, they all transportation, they all impact um, you know communities and their disparities in every single one of those areas. So, you know, I tell I try to talk to people about. I know you came in asking about doing X. We really need somebody with your voice over here to do Y. Um, so it's really about just engaging. Um, and you know, we're not. It, we do have people who come in, they start the process and then they're like, oh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait. That's okay. You know, I think again, part of my having been on the other side um, is that we acknowledge that people have, they have real lives and they're making real life decisions. And, you know, it's not um, always easy to take on something new, especially not now. Um, and even within the administration, you know, we have legal positions, we have director positions um, that we are trying to recruit for. And, you know, it's 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 not it's not easy to get people to sort of dive in and engage in that in that process. So, I just my entire like goal um, with these discussions is to just try to encourage somebody who is thinking I really don't wasn't needing to take anything else on to do it. Well, Secretary Rivera, I just want to thank you for your time and for bearing with us on all the technological challenges that we experienced tonight. Um, <laughs> and for sharing your expertise and your insight and your experience with us. Um, uh, there's obviously a tremendous amount of interest in, in serving on boards and commissions in California. And um, I wanna thank everybody for their great questions and for attending tonight and um, hope everybody stays safe and takes good care. And we look forward to seeing you all again in the near future. Great, thank you. Please feel free to reach out too. <laughs>